Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Again, uh, just going over some digital signage here. Um, different types of digital signage that are out there today. You can do interactive signage, which is getting very, very large. Um, menu boards is very popular. Um, you can put them in your cafeterias. You can put them uh, anywhere that uh, maybe in a library. You can also do um, pretty much anywhere there's food. Um, electronic displays, just an LCD that has some content on it. You can put those on your wall, um, make them interactive. Uh, large format, um, such as campuses, you can uh, put the same images on multiple LCDs using different, uh, do, using di uh, same media players. Um, narrow casting, dynamic, again, campus communications, uh, out, of home, out of home networks. Uh, electronic bulletin boards. Um, so you can, instead of having those everyday pin up paper boards and everything, you can actually put uh, messages on our boards and that's kind of what digital uh, signage in campuses are doing instead of having those paper boards that go digital and we uh, do everything on a web-based format and we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, some of the installs that uh, uh, campus, un uh, campus communications are at uh, that we have done Creighton, Auburn, uh, University of Michigan, uh, Nebraska, Lincoln, um, some more, Montana State, um, Montevallo, Washburn University, Missouri State. Uh, you can kind of just see the different formats that people are placing them in. Uh, Montana State, you can kind of see it's behind a nice glass, a glass wall there. Um, just kind of different ways you can bring in a, a different look and a different appeal for it. Uh, Baruch, DC, Villanova. Here, uh, this is outside their wild card. They just have messaging for their students. Good place to put something uh, as far as digital signage go goes, because obviously everybody, all the students have to go to that direction. So that's a good capturing point to putting any any important messages or any important dates, or maybe there's um, some speeches or some uh, special classes that they want to get across as far as that. Um, Rise display. Uh, we've been doing this for over oops, 15 years. Uh, we are in over 150 universities throughout U.S. and Canada, controlling thousands of displays um, throughout uh, South America, United States, Canada, um, whether it be university, um, banks, um, corporate locations. Uh, we, digital signage is what we do in whole. Universities just happens to be a, a niche that we, that we chose to follow as far as that goes. Um, Rise Display, we offer the complete solution. So we offer the software, the content design, the LCDs, the installation mounts, cables, we offer it all. So we offer every part of your digital signage instead of having different vendors for each application, we control everything for you and that way there's always just one go-to person. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we are a web-based software provider and so what this is called is software as a service or SaaS. Software as a service, what that is is you control every piece of your digital signage via the web. So there's a uh, displaywire.com is what we use and you would go on, every person would be given a logon and a password where you would get on and control what content's showing and where and we'll get into that a little bit more as far as controlling content and what, um, how we actually get playlists and things to show on site. Oops, keep going there. Um, just continuing on software as a service. Um, you know, it's replacing that on-site server that some digital signage companies still choose to go with, but the, uh, the advantage of web-based over server-based is your IT department doesn't have to worry about that server. If that server goes down, your digital signage goes down. With web-based, uh, as far as we're concerned, we actually have redundant servers, so even if a server went down, there's always a backup server out there that's going to help you protect. And then. Um, also with digital science, we have uh, media players. Media player, it's an XP computer, and that's what actually takes the content from the web and pushes it to the LCDs. So let's say you even lose your internet connection, which sometimes does happen. Well, those computers have a hard drive on it, and so the hard drive captures what was sent across at that point, and it continues to show without, when, so when you look at it, it doesn't look like there's uh, anything missing, and once the connection's regained, then it would update with any changes or any kind of financial information that, that was uh, involved. Um, how it works, uh, I kind of gave you a little explanation of, about that there. Um, again, the web-based part of it, 
is uh, how we're actually getting the content to there. First of all, you have your LCD display there. The Rise Engine uh, Media Player is what I was referring to. It's an XP-based computer, and this takes the content from the web. That's what you would need to control your content. Um, you monitor your content and your live data via the Rise Display Network, or Display Wire is what it is. Um, we have servers that manages your content, your uh, alerts, so, and it uh, also manages any kind of ticker information. The ticker information is kind of what's scrolling available for you at the very bottom. So there's different types of creative uh, views you can have as far as that's concerned. Um, alerts is something that I'm going to get into a little further, but we do offer, uh, and it's included in the whole package, uh, emergency alert notification. Not only can we tie into what you existingly have, um, that's kind of on a uh, one-off basis. It kind of depends on who you're using, if we can tie into them or not. But we also do have the ability to display alerts from our software using the web-based program. You can do that via the phone or also via the internet using your user log on the password. Yes? So if you already have another alert system as software as a service, you mm -hmm. would be able to tie into them? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We would just okay. need to get their protocols and just kind of work with them and figure out if, if we mesh together. So yeah, that is something that we can definitely do. Uh, and then the web-based content management again. So not only can you be um, at your desk at work, you can be at home. So you know if you're in charge of the sign and Sunday's your day to catch up on some work before the week starts, you can schedule everything to play at a certain date, a certain time on a you know for this length of time from home. Any internet accessible computer that uh, that's available to you is where you can actually get in and change the content and manage your content. Placeholder, um, you can kind of see the box there where the sweatshirt's at. That, in our terminology, is a placeholder. The placeholder is what you have control over showing information on. So you can put messages up there. You can have class schedule, lab hours. Uh, maybe there's an important speech that the, president is, that the president did, and you took a video of it. You can put a video in there. So any type of media file, we can upload to our media library on the web. Uh, some, some differences in looking at software as a service based on a conventional on-site <coughs> application. Um, again, your, your impact on IT, if you have a server on-site, there's going to be a lot of times where they have to go and they have to maintain that. In IT, they have enough projects um, you know, they, on their plate and everything. Why have them manage something else where you can simply do it via the web, where we take care of everything, all you do is log on and make your changes. So the impact is, is definitely high as far as the on-site server. Via, uh, uh, based on the web base, it's going to be low um, to, to very minimal for your IT department. Um, anybody can use the software. We do training. It's very user-friendly as far as that's concerned. Uh, the time to implement, as far as getting the uh, actual server, you got to put the server in. you got to get your appropriate security measures on it. So again, eating your IT department's time up where all we would do is we would come in with our media player, plug and play is how it works. We do everything on the front end where we com completely create your content and then you can manage it as time goes on, but we plug in the media player, plug it to the LCD, and then we're off and running. Uh, flexibility, um, scalability as far as the on-site server goes. Well, your on-site server is going to be in one location, so getting it to the multiple points is going to be a little hard. Uh, if you have the web base, we can do uh, different locations very, very easily compared to the on-site, to the, the, the dedicated server there. Uh, ongoing impact on your business, again, eating up that IT time over and over and over again. Um, with the on-site server is going to be at a risk of being high compared to the web-based service where there is none, nothing for the IT department to take care of on that end. Um, this is kind of showing you display wire. This is our software package. It kind of shows you, and this is what we're going to go through is the navigation part of it. Uh, when you logged on, when you would log on, this is what you would see. Each user is defined specific roles, so they're only going to see certain things. Um, you can manage your content. It shows you the display, so the LCDs where all the content's going, um, and it has the company information. You can see the send an alert, so that's where it's the very first thing you could go there. Send out an alert, you can send it to all displays, and you can tell it that how long you want it to play. After that alert's done, it's going to go right back to what it was showing in your presentation before. 
Um, and then over here, you'll see that we have the media library where all of your content's going to be stored. Then the bulletin is the actual, if you want to think of it as kind of a slide, it's not a PowerPoint slide because we do it, we use a flash and we use a lot of graphics so it's more graphically appealing, but that kind of just kind of lets you know kind of what that is. And then the playlist is what's playing inside of the placeholder. And then the presentation is the overall look and feel of what it is. And the presentation is something that we'll creatively design specific to your organization. We'll put your logo, your school seal in the background, if you want temperature here, time here, we can uh, creatively design that specific to you. Uh, again, the presentation is the overall look and feel of this. So you'll see here that there's different presentations that you have the ability to choose from. Um, we'll design again for you specifically, or there's actually standard templates you can choose, and you can have creative control over those specific templates. Are you limited to just one? No, no. Yeah, yeah, we can design 30, we can design one, we can design as many as you want as far as the presentations are concerned there. Um, continuing on, we, you'll see here that there's a, the schedule right here, and then that's just showing you what they have it scheduled, so you have the ability to schedule it on a daily basis, a, uh, an hourly basis. When you want it to show, you can tell it to play. Uh, here's an example of a presentation. Um, this is again just one look and feel. You see the live TV in a window. Um, you have the time, date, weather, weather, sports scores, and then your user ability to uh, control your content via the web. Another example, just showing you how we can change things up. The media library, as I mentioned, is where you would store your media files. So you can create anything you want on the back end. So once you get the product, our product, and we design the initial background and presentation for you, you can actually design anything. And as long as it's designed in a media file format, you can upload it to our media library. And then you can pick and choose exactly when you want it to play, where you want it to play. If you want it to play on the business school LCD, if you want it to play on the cafeteria LCD, you can tell it where you want it to go. Not, it doesn't have to go to, a, to every, every single uh, L display that's out there, so you can pick and choose where it's going to go as far as that is concerned. And as far as storage goes, we, there's pretty much endless storage on the actual website, so you won't have to worry about any backlogging or anything. Um, <clears throat> bulletins, as I mentioned again, is what's actually playing inside of the placeholder. Um, this is where you would actually be able to go in and edit. We have many bulletins, there's probably 500 different bulletins, looks and feels that are already designed that you would have access to, but you can always upload more in your own look and feel. But this is just where it shows you where you can actually go in and edit. So like for your event calendar, it says June 9th, well maybe it's the next month and you want to put July's information in there. So you can go in there, type in July, what's going on on July 1st, or, and, and all that information. Over here, you're going to see the ability for, basically, uh, the editor is Gus Rodriguez. This shows you, or this is actually Byron's information, sorry. He has control over content editor and content reviewer. What this means for us is you can have maybe a student organization design some things, put it into a playlist, but it won't actually show on the LCD until it's approved. So you could have somebody be an overall approver, maybe the, the dean or the dean's assistant or something, and that, and that person would actually say, okay, they can look for it, make sure there's no profanity in it or anything. Go ahead and push that onto the actual LCD itself. And you can do that on an individual user basis, control what they have access to. The playlist is actually the items that are actually playing. So it's the bulletins that are playing inside of the placeholder there. So you can schedule news, sports, you can put any information on there as well. And then it's a little blurry, but this is where I was discussing how you can control when and where it's played. Uh, you can see it's a, you got daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. You can choose what days you want it to play on, when you want it to end. Um, this is every piece of the puzzle you can control for each individual playlist or bulletin telling it, when, telling it when you want it to play.
Um, our alerts, as I mentioned, we can tie into your existing, or we actually you can use our web-based or our cell phone-based. So on your cell phones, um, this is great for uh, your campus police. A lot of them carry PDA smartphones now, um, or your personal PDA smartphone. Um, you could get onto online via your phone, type in the alert message, and basically as you're walking away from either the scene or if you're walking away from something or maybe you're running to the shelter, there's a tornado coming or something like that. This is where you could get that. As you can see, it says flood, flood warning. So you can make it say whatever you want it to say and it goes red and white, red and white, back and forth. Um, if you have speakers on your, uh, on your monitor, we can do audible noise. It's just kind of a ding dong noise. Just bringing the attention to the students and faculty or whoever's walking by that something's going on with that. Any questions about alerts or... We, make, we, we made it very simple. We didn't want it to be in-depth, type in your message and hit go kind of a thing. That obviously, if it's an alert, you need to get it out quick and fast. Uh, continue on with a little bit more with the user rights. Um, again, each specific person can have certain roles and abilities. Um, as you see, I made myself a, the overall alert administrator content administrator so you can say well this person has the ability to do content but cannot send alerts so maybe alerts is only for the dean's assistant or the campus police so you can give certain people um, the different abilities and that's where the web base also comes in handy is because everybody's given their own user logon and password so they have that information they can set it so where they're automatically logged on and they just type in their alerts or anything like that that they need to control Display monitoring and auto updates. Um, since we are web-based, and this is another great example of how web-based is a little superior to server. All of your updates, how do I get my updates? Since we're web-based, we automatically do it on a quarterly basis. That's how often we, re that we release a new version of our software. Now when we do that, prior to it actually releasing, we'll send out emails to whoever wants the actual email so you can choose who gets emails and who doesn't and say, okay, well here we're going to go and train you on this portion and this portion of what's new. And we also do, um, we have pre-recorded trainings so you can look at those at any time as far as that goes. Um, you also see here that over uh, Matt's creative computer has a, the red, so that means that there's something going on with that. So whoever's in charge of keeping the, the displays running, an email would be sent to them saying, hey, there's something wrong with Matt's uh, creative computer and then that way they would know that they need to get it, pay attention to that and then they can fix whatever they need to fix and get it back up and running there. To be able to get, uh, this is just kind of a diagram layout of our engine in the upper left hand corner and then the LCD. Well to be able to get the signal from point A to point B you have to have some kind of video signal. Now if it's real close to each other, we can mount the, the engine, the media player, behind the LCD, or we can rack mount it, or we can put it anywhere. It doesn't really matter, it's just wherever you guys feel that you want to put that. Well if it's real close, then we can just use straight VGA cable or any kind of video uh, cable. If it's over a great distance, we actually can convert it from video signal to Cat5 or Ethernet, Cat5, Cat6. What would be considered a great distance? Um, we can, do, we can run that up to 360 feet. Uh, as far as video cables go, you really don't want to run them over 100 feet because um, the video quality, and now there's probably super duper video cables out there, but the cost and expense in that, um, you can do that. But our uh, broadcaster receiver system, so video over ethernet, um, we can run, do 360 and then up to 1,000 feet, uh, depending on the power of the actual broadcaster or receiver for, as far as that goes. Is there any questions about that portion? Okay. Well, that's all we have uh, for the presentation. Uh, it was short and sweet, just kind of a quick overview of campus communications. Uh, was there anything that I didn't cover that you were hoping to get? I'm just a little curious uh, if there were, you have your unit that would go let's right next to the, uh, the screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you would have your main unit. Yes. And how many of those little units could you connect to that main unit? Uh, if we go back to the broadcaster, which is right next to the engine, you'll okay. see those eight outputs on the back. Right. So one engine 
could go to any amount of LCDs. Uh, it's all based, we all do it on the broadcaster and receiver so system, so we can split it. Yeah, yep. And mm -hmm. what do you call the second thing, the broadcaster? Broadcaster, and then receiver would be at each LCD, the receiver would need to be, because it converts the Ethernet back to video signal. Right. So yeah, as far as that goes, um, each broadcaster can do eight, and there's, we have more hard, we have different hardware we, we can do, keep splitting that signal to multiple within inside one building. That, did that answer that question? It did, yeah. Okay, great. Yes? Can you go back to that slide that has the 9 or 12 different applications, like the, the menu board and all that? Oh, yeah. The beginning? I probably should have went the other way. <laughs> this one or? No, it's for there. that one. Yeah, okay. See where they're all showing all 9? Yes. What's an example of interactive sightings? Um, that example right up at the top actually is ING. They are a client of ours and they have uh, cafes now where you can kind of go and hang out and check banking and all that. Well, they, that little kiosk at the very bottom, they have that and it's just you can get on, touch it, maybe you want to surf the web, maybe you want to look up some, some, some specific information, you can do that. Now what campuses are doing is they're putting these in maybe in the main lobby of any school. You can actually make these interactive. We can put floor plans on there. We can have it where touch here for faculty. You can touch that, pulls up a list of all the faculty members. You can touch on that certain person's name and it shows you where their office is located at. Or maybe their office hours only. Maybe they don't want to be known where they're at. You can show any type of information. But it doesn't show on the screen that you're punching. It shows on this gigantic screen. That's how ING chose to do it. They chose to have a kiosk and then the LCDs. Yeah. We can do an overlay over the actual LCD itself where you won't have that and you just touch. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, you can, just, you can make it either way. There's, uh, there's the, kiosk, the small kiosk, which again, it can control. Uh, theirs is actually just controlling the middle one. The other two signage are just messaging for them. Uh, narrow casting is, again, it's in a lobby, and you are uh, broadcasting that to a specific group. So it's specific to the business school. So the information you're showing, it's basically narrow, it's defined, it's defined to what they need to know. Yes.